Hello, this is a reading of a wonderful book about an artist. It is called A Splash of Red, The Life and Art of Horace Pippin. And this is a true story. This is what they call a biography. It's written by Jen Bryant and illustrated by Melissa Sweet. The colors are simple, such as brown, amber, yellow, black, white, and green. On February 22, 1888, the town of Westchester, Pennsylvania celebrated a holiday. That day, in that same town, Daniel and Christine Pippin celebrated the birth of their son, Horace. Um, and that holiday is the birthday of George Washington, which was sort of the beginning of President's Day, boys and girls. Horace grew fast, so fast that his mother could barely keep up with the mending. He'll be a giant someday, the neighbors would say. Grandma Pippin smiled at Horace's long legs and big hands. She figured the neighbors were right. Grandma's hands were big, too, rough and scarred from her slave days in Virginia, but they were just fine for giving Horace hugs. The biggest part of you, she told him, is inside where no one can see. When Horace was three years old, the Pippins moved to Goshen, New York. As the family grew larger, everyone helped out. Horace put his big hands to work. He fetched flour for his mother. He sorted laundry with his sisters. He played with his baby brother. He held the horse while the driver delivered milk. At night, he piled hot wood for the stove and arranged dominoes so his grandmother could play. Then, if he could find a scrap of paper and a piece of charcoal, he drew pictures of what he'd seen that day. Horace loved to draw. He loved the feel of the charcoal as it slid across the floor. He loved looking at something in the room and making it come alive again in front of him. He loved thinking about a friend or a pet and then drawing them from the picture in his mind. At school, he sat quietly at his desk, but his big hands were always busy. Make a picture for us, Horace, his classmates said, and Horace did. His pictures made people happy, except when he made some next to his spelling list. That made the teacher mad. But Horace couldn't stop drawing. And it says, um, there's the pictures there next to word, the words. And he writes, pictures just come to my mind, and I tell my heart to go ahead. One day, Horace saw a funny face in a magazine. Draw me and win a prize, it said underneath. Horace drew the face and sent it off. A few weeks later, a package arrived. Inside, Horace found colored pencils, a pair of brushes, and a box of paints. Congratulations, said the note. Horace had, fun, as, had won his first real art supplies. Paint a picture for us, Horace. Oops. His sisters cried, and Horace did. He painted everyday scenes in natural colors, and then he added a splash of red. Horace was in eighth grade when his father left for good. The family needed money, so Horace quit school and went to work. For several years, Horace's big hands were always busy, stacking grain sacks at the feed store, shoveling coal at a rail yard, mending fences on a farm, carrying luggage at a hotel, making breaks in an iron factory, pack packing oil paintings into large wooden crates. Looking at these made Horace remember winning the art contest, how proud he'd been, how he'd love those colored pencils, those brushes, and his first real box of paints. Horace was a big man now, with big responsibilities. Still, he loved drawing as much as he always had. He used charcoal, broken pencils, whatever he could find. Make a picture for us, Horace, the other worker said, and Horace did. 
From across the ocean, far across the ocean, a terrible war had begun. Horace's big heart wanted to help. The good old USA was in trouble with Germany. He joined the army and sailed away. Uh, and that is World War One, boys and girls, World War One. In France, Horace and his regiment dug deep trenches for protection. This is right here is what they call a trench. There were no blankets or beds. It was always wet and cold and dark. I have not seen the sun in more than a month, Horace wrote. He wrapped his big hands around a rifle. Planes droned overhead. Shells exploded. Guns rattled. Or gunfire rattled through the night. If the fighting stopped for a while, Horace put down his gun and picked up a pencil. Make a picture for us, Horace, his soldier friends pleaded. And Horace did. He filled his notebooks one by one. And at the bottom here, it says, the war brought out all the art in me, he said. One day, he climbed to the top of a trench and the shot rang out. Horace felt pain in his shoulder. He was hit. Horace was glad to be alive, but the bullet had da badly damaged his right arm. When it healed, he couldn't lift or move it the way he used to. Now when someone said, make a picture for us, Horace, Horace could not. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped a part where it said many hours passed before help came. After the war, Horace came back to the United States and met Jenny Wade. Jenny was a hard worker. She loved to cook. Horace was a hard worker, too. He loved to eat. It was a good match. They married and settled down in Westchester. And it says, Horace and Jenny Pippin, November 20th, 1920. So that was 101 years ago, where they, 100, 100, about 100 years ago, they got married. I can never forget suffering and I will never forget sunset. It came, I came home with all of it in my mind. Horace was 32 years old, as big, as strong as ever. But because of his injured arm, he couldn't find a job. How much can you lift? The hiring boss asked. And that was the end of that. So Horace did what he could. He organized a Boy Scout troop. He umpired baseball games. He took the neighbor's children fishing. When Jenny started a laundry business, Horace delivered the clean clothes. As he walked along the streets of Westchester, his fingers itched to draw all the colors and textures he saw. Lacy white curtains billowing in the window, a splash of red geraniums blooming on a step, a yellow cat sprinting down an alleyway. An alley, deep green vines spiraling up a wall. At night, his old home in Goshen, his grandmother's slave days, and the Bible stories she told made pictures in his mind. He longed to draw them, too. But how? His right arm was weak and painful to lift. The iron poker stood by the fire, straight and tall as a soldier. Could he... With his left hand, he grasped his right wrist. He thrust the poker into flames until it glowed red hot. Using his good arm and to move the hurt one, he scorched lines into wood. Make a picture for us, Horace, the neighbor said, and Horace did. With practice, his arm grew stronger, his hand steadier. Maybe now, he told Jenny, I can try painting. There was no money for art supplies, so Horace used an old brush and leftover house paint he found in the alleys. For a canvas, he used a clean piece of cloth. Every day and late into the night, Horace worked on his painting. He used gray, black, and white, the somber colors of war. Here and there, he added a splash of red. If a man knows nothing but hard times, he will paint them, for he must be true to himself. He used 100 layers of paint and decorated the frame with tiny sculptures. Three years later, he was finished. 
Now as he delivered laundry or fished in the river, new new ideas came, but he didn't paint them right away. Before he reached for a brush, Horace, Horace planned each new scene in his head. He painted the milkman in his wagon, women working in the kitchen, children playing games in the yard, cotton fields and log cabins, John Brown and Abraham Lincoln, war scenes and Bible tales, men singing on the corner. Horace hung his paintings in a shoe store window. Five dollars each, said the sign. He hung others in a restaurant. He even traded one for a haircut. People admired Horace's paintings, but no one bought them. Then the president of the local artist club saw Horace's pictures. He told his friend, the famous painter N.C. Wyeth, to come see them too. Wyeth agreed. Horace's paintings were good. Very good. Do you have more? the men asked. Horace showed them his work. He held his breath as they looked and talked. Finally, they said, you should have your own art show. A one-man exhibition right here in Westchester. Horace couldn't hardly believe it. He shook hands with the men. When they left, he celebrated with Jenny. It is some of the purest expression I have seen in a long time. People came from all around to see Horace's paintings. Magazines wrote articles. Reporters took photos. An art dealer told Horace he would help him sell his work. More than 40 years passed since Horace won his first box of paints. Now, at last, everyone knew he was an artist. Horace became famous. His paintings hung in big city galleries. Museums displayed them. Collectors admired them. Movie stars bought them. Once again, Horace's big hands were always busy. And some of the headlines say, Artist show wins acclaim. London to see Pippin painting. Pippin has them talking. A brush with greatness. Drawing from the heart. And if you stood outside his house late at night, you might see him leaning toward his easel, his left hand holding up his right, painting the pictures in his mind. Um, And that's the end of the story. Uh, It said Horace Pippin was born on George Washington's birthday, February 22nd, 1888. I'm not going to read the whole uh, historical note just because it's so long, but Here is a picture of the real Horace Pippin. And let me show you. um, I don't know if it says what year he died. Let me see. I imagine um, maybe the 60s. Oh, no, it says 1946. He died in 1946. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed that book. Oh, you can see places where you can see Horace Pippin's art and um, different. So there is a place, I guess, in San Francisco, there is one of his paintings, probably at the Modern Art Museum. So that's awesome. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed um, this book. And if you have a chance, check out the artwork of Horace Pippin. He... um, He made some beautiful paintings. All right. Thank you for listening.